Most people are introduced to shooting through air rifles. Many are then eager to step up onto proper rifles, but there is a lot to be said for endeavouring to master the art of one before moving on to a bigger bang. Roy has always been an air gun fan, but for a bit of an experiment, and more importantly to improve his accuracy, we are going to do some back of envelope calculations. Well, actually back of cardboard box. As I've not used an air rifle for quite some time, we thought it would be a good idea just to come out, have a bit of a play on the target. So we're going to put a series of dots on here um, and just figure out where we're shooting at different ranges because obviously with a sub 12 foot pound air rifle then the trajectory can be quite steep. 35 and then we shall do one at 50. So we'll just see where our, where our ranges are and exactly where the gun's shooting before we go out and uh, use it in anger. Roy has zeroed in at 25 yards, but will start at 10 and work backwards. A rangefinder is a vital piece of kit for this sort of work. It's essential if we want to find out just what happens to our pellets as they battle against gravity and the forces of nature. You're obviously trying to shoot headshots on a lot of animals, and so you've got a very small target area, so what you're trying to do is make sure you can be as precise as possible. So having a, a rangefinder really does enable you just to uh, with pinpoint accuracy figure out where you are and with the mill dots in the scope if you know where you are on your range then you can easily adjust up or down just with a little bit of hold over or hold under and you should be smack on the target and we'll send a pellet on the way like that so actually at 10 that's not too low at all so we'll just put another one in just to make sure and same hole so that's exactly what we should expect from an air rifle of this sort of quality, so it's same hole grouping. So we'll move back now to 25 and see where we go. Right, okay, so we are smack on 25, all focused in. I shall just put one up the chamber. Almost same position. So we'll do it again. And we're there again, so actually there's just a touch over to the left. At 35 yards, things start to get a bit more tricky and Roy has to compensate for drop-off with holdover and there's the gusting wind. So we're on 35 yards here and I'm just going to hit the record button. I would have expected we'll probably get maybe a mill dot drop on here, but we shall soon find out. So hit that on the target. There you go, actually mill dot and a half and yet we are slightly to the left on here shooting through. So we'll put another one down, see if we get the same result. Down there like that, so yeah the wind's interfering, so that one's a little bit further down as well. So we just have to, we've got to take into consideration that we have a bit of side wind. So what we would do now at 35 yards is if we were aiming directly at that target with no wind, we would put that mill dot straight on it at 35 yards and then we should be, st we should be straight onto it. But we've also got a little bit of windage as well. So with the windage what we're going to do is we're going to come across and mill dot across like that. So we're going to aim off the target like so and we'll just see if we can get anywhere near the, the target there. So what you saw on the shot there was perfect height so we'd adjusted up so we were absolutely spot on online of where we wanted to be um, but obviously with the different wind strength it's going to always affect the pellet depending if you hit or if you shoot in a gust or in a lull in the wind so that's what you've always got to try and do if you are having to go out and you are shooting in the wind always be aware of it especially with an air rifle and then just to make your compensations. At 50 the shot has dropped about 6 inches but a couple of shots with adjustment puts Roy bang on the money. You can see we've got a huge drop off on 50 being zeroed at 25 so uh, then we adjusted for it so we know where we need to be on that came up here and then just adjusted for the windage and the height from that shot to there so we knew where we were another fine adjustment and we were smack on at the 50 yards so hopefully we know pretty much where we're going to be. 
so with a clear picture of where that pellet is flying, it's time for an airgun safari. Roy's eccentric family home has a wide range of bird life, from eagles to doves to peacocks, so there's plenty of food about for crows, pigeons, rabbits and squirrels. With the camera watching Roy's every move, we can analyse where he's putting the crosshairs and see just how the quarry reacts. OK, we got the carrion crow just landed in the tree there. And I reckon he's about 20 yards. Let's try. Oh, no way. That just parted his feathers by the looks of that. I want to go and have a look at that and replay. So uh, I think I just undercompensated where he was sitting high up in the tree there. Um, the shot looked like it just went straight over the top of his head and just skimmed it. Um, and I think that must have been down to the angle that I was shooting at. So I was aiming smack on, but the pellet went above. So I think I didn't compensate because we were shooting at quite a steep angle up. Uh, oh well, hopefully another one will come in. Okay, so about 40 yards. Oh, excellent. Okay. I want to have a look at that. Ooh. He was just on about 45 yards. And you can see that. that and it just dropped, so I, I didn't quite allow enough. But with the angle of where the drop-off was coming, it was directly in line of where his neck was. So luckily it, uh, it took him out there. So uh, that was a nice clean kill. So he was done. All right, let's see if we can get a couple more. We've got a feral pigeon just sitting up here. We'll see if we can uh, put a few ferals in the bag, keep the ferrets going for a few days. So let's see if we can get him. He's about 20 yards, so that should be aiming smack on. OK, just wait for his head to come round. And... Yep, OK, perfect. Excellent. Right, any more? No, nothing there in a minute. But the reason we're shooting the ferals is we've got quite a big population of white doves here. And with the white doves, obviously, they attract in a lot of other pigeons. So uh, when they come in, they can bring disease and whatever else in. So we're, we're constantly trimming the, uh, the feral pigeons and what have you as they come in. And we also trim up the white doves as well because we, uh, we end up with a flock of about two or three hundred come the winter otherwise. So it's, uh, it's always a good source of food for the ferrets and whatever else through the season. So when we get the opportunity to pop a few off, we certainly take it. This is a shot that we, we had a bit earlier, and it was a, a miss on a rabbit. I just want to see exactly what happened. I'm presuming I must have shot over the top. So uh, that's the wonderful thing with this camera. It just shows you your mistakes and where you went wrong. So hopefully we can see the muzzle go in a second. Look, wow, look at that. That is phenomenal. You actually see the pellet just arcing over the top of his head and him ducking down. I don't know whether he saw that coming or just felt it. I think he probably just felt it as it went over his, uh, his head. Um, but it, again, that really just highlights how effective you've got to be on your range finding. So you've got to, you've got to really sort of either take a range finder out with you or, or, or be as good as, and as accurate as you can in getting your ranges. So it's probably worth going out and trying beforehand um, because that, was, that rabbit was, I think, 35 yards. Um, and I'd allowed for a 40 yard shot. So uh, I was just aimed a little bit too far above his ears. This was a rabbit shot by a young friend of mine, Jordan. And, uh, and it really does demonstrate how bad the windage can be or your windage adjustment needs to be, as we showed when we were shooting at the target. So when the pellet goes, you can see it's taken by the wind. So on this shot, we've got a left to right wind and you can see it taking the shot or taking the pellet right over and rather than hitting on the, in the head of the rabbit it goes in and uh, hits it square in the chest so still a, a very good um, kill shot but not the one he was after so you could see he'd already come forward so he'd come forward to allow for the windage but just not quite enough and uh, luckily the, the pellet still found its mark
We've had some success, but Roy is not overly happy. He thinks that some fine tuning could improve his accuracy. One of the problems has been changing the magnification on the scope. This has been putting the mill dots out, which means the adjustments he's making are not precise. He also wants to re-zero at 35 yards and work through the ranges again. He believes this will deliver a flatter trajectory, which means less time worrying about compensating for the shot in the field. That's about right, so level-wise we're just a touch off, but that's okay. And spot on. Okay. So we're now at 20 yards. Just make sure we're on, see where it's going at 20, give us some sort of idea. Just to make sure, always take a couple of shots. Yeah, that one, we're just exactly one mil dot high there. Onto the 40. And again, the wind's just taking a little bit there. Onto the 50 dot. It seems to be more in line, but the wind stopped there. We didn't get any windage issues. So this is out to 60. And we'll see how much more drop away we get just with that extra 10 yards. So let's now look at the complete picture for four different scenarios. 2-2, two, two, zeroed at 25 yards there, and we've got a huge curve off and drop off like that. So from the very start all the way through, we were just trying to catch our tails all the time, but the pellet from the, the moment it was leaving the barrel was curving away from us. With a 2-2, two, two, zeroed at 35 yards, excuse my writing, it's awful, and you can see here, we started off at 10, so we're a little bit high at 10, and then we've got the curve going up, over, round, dropping off, and then really dropping away there. So this is 2-2, two, two, zeroed at 30 yards, okay, so slightly low at 10, but not, not enough off to really matter, and then we go just up a little bit to 20, through 30, perfectly, and drop down to 50, so that's almost a more usable curve of the trajectory on there. And then, just to show the differences, what we've got here is we shot the same target, the same ranges, with a 177. So, we've got 177, okay, that was zeroed at 40 yards, okay. And then you can see here, spot on at 10, a little bit high at 20, still rising to 30, smack on at 40, down through to 50, okay, so it was dropping off there, but throughout the range of 10 to 40, a much better trajectory. Interesting stuff, and with this in mind, Roy chooses to zero at 30, and head off after some more bunnies. The first is at 30 yards, so in theory should be spot on. Even though it takes some grass seeds with it, the pellet finds its target exactly where the crosshairs came to rest. The second rabbit Roy has since described as a ninja. This shot is at 17 yards. Again, remembering we are zeroed at 30, Roy puts the crosshairs level with the eye. He expects the pellet to be rising, so we'll find the target between the centre and the first mill dot. However, this rabbit has other ideas, and it ducks. Not in response to a low-flying object soaring over his head, but just before the pellet reaches its target. Slowing the shot down further, it clearly shows the ear being clipped. Did it hear the shot? Did it see the pellet? You tell us. Whatever you think, it's a great excuse if you...